So what exactly is origami? Well, origami, when literally translated, comes from two Japanese words that mean folding paper. The creation of shapes and forms using only paper with no tape, glue, or scissors is what origami is. Did you ever wonder where something like origami began? Well, origami was originally developed in China during the 1st and 2nd century. It eventually moved towards Japan during the 6th century. Traditionally, in Japan, the bride's father made the cranes and presented them to the bride on her wedding day. Today, the cranes can be made by the bride's parents as a gift and well-wish for the newlyweds. The bride alone or the couple together can also take on the task, learning patience, commitment, and communication in the face of a long, challenging task. Or, folding the cranes can be divided among many friends and family and turned into social events and fun times spent together ahead of the wedding. It's entirely up to you and it depends on what tradition behind the cranes means to you. If you look, many Japanese weddings will have cranes as a symbol of luck. This art form of origami has been passed down from parents to their children for many generations. At one time in Japan, origami was even taught in schools. Today, this is an art form taught mostly to children at home. Did you know that practicing origami uses your entire brain? It develops coordination, patience, attention span, math skills, symmetry understanding, and many, many more abilities. The legend of the paper crane has a beautiful story that goes behind it. This story was inspired by true events that happened in Japan. The story is about a two-year-old Sadako Sasaki who was living in Hiroshima when the atom bomb was dropped. Sadly, 10 years later, she was diagnosed with leukemia, which was also known as the, as the atom bomb disease. There is a Japanese legend that says if a sick person folds 1,000 paper cranes, the gods will make her well again. Sadako spent long hours in bed folding those paper cranes and never giving up that hope. When Sadako had folded 644 cranes and they hung above her bed on strings, her classmates folded the rest. Today, there is a memorial in Hiroshima Peace Park dedicated to Sadako. Children come there and leave the paper cranes they make in her honor. You can see the actual picture of Sadako in the top of this page, and you can also see the statue that they made for Sadako in the bottom right-hand corner. Above her head, she holds a giant paper crane. The crane is now an international symbol for peace. In Japan, every child sooner or later learns how to make a crane by folding paper. A crane is considered a sacred bird of Japan. It is believed that if you fold 1,000 cranes, you will have a wish granted. Now, I want you to try. I want you to choose one of the videos below this video to give a try at origami for yourself. You don't need any special paper or just scraps that are laying around your house. Different sizes and colors can make fun patterns as well. In the story of Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, she used everything that she could get her hands on. She used old paper, she used receipts, she used candy wrappers, all to create her 1,000 paper cranes. By the way, if you are interested in checking out the book, Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, there is a copy in our school library, as well as several in the Global Studies room. Reach out to me if you would like to borrow a copy of the book. I look forward to seeing the awesome things that you create uh, with origami. I will be setting up a flip grid so that you can share the cool things that you are creating. All right. Arigato, sayonara.